this is part three of this story. Um, I will be linking parts one and two in the cart, so please go back and look at those. Um, you have to really bear with me because part three, part one and two, I already thought about. Actually, half of it I didn't, so I am coming up with this story off the top of my head. I know what or how I want it to end, but girl, we're just gonna basically wing it. So if I remember correctly, um, Landon's mama has just revealed why her aunt, Aunt Kitty, um, went away to the woods and her mother, Francine, basically was the cause of Aunt Kitty's fiance dying in a car accident. Um, they were supposed to be these very successful dressmakers. Francine was modeling the dresses. Francine got jealous of Kitty because she was going to stay in Alabama and get married. And Francine wanted to make it to France, be a big shot, and that didn't happen. Okay. So, a um, little bit belong to anyone. So that's when Landon's mom then um, revealed something about the grandmother that um, she's been wanting to keep a secret for as long as possible. Uh, so Landon, now since I told you that, I think it's a good time to let you also know that grandma is ill. She's not feeling well. She has cancer, baby. And so we need to all be in good spirits around her. Um, don't let her know that you know though because she doesn't really want people feeling sorry for her and she just wants to pretend like everything is okay. And so Landon was a little confused. He said, but doesn't she want us to take care of her? She said, no, she doesn't want us to take care of her until she gets really sick. And, she's, and he shook his head. He said, okay, I'll try mama. Um, <laughs> when Landon went over to his cousins, the cousins were like, Landon, guess who we saw on the edge of the woods and we'd never seen her this close. They said, who? And um, they said, uh, the old cat lady, Miss Kitty, Aunt Kitty. Now, now they can call her Aunt Kitty since, since she's family that now. That's too obvious. Yeah, it's Aunt Kitty. So, and um, y'all, y'all, I've been calling, I've been going between Portia and Passion. This is the same person, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, just let me help with that. So, Passion. It's Passion, right? Passion. Okay, Passion. So, Passion was like, and guess what, Landon? She wants us to come over to her house. And Landon was confused. He said, what do you mean us? And Red said, just like that. She wants all of us to come over to her house because she wants to just talk to us. And so, Landon was like, what does she got to talk to us about? <sighs> Poor she rolled to her, her, her eyes. She said, don't act chicken, Landon. Porsche. A oh, passion. passion. Passion rolled her eyes and was like, don't act chicken again, Landon. Now that we know <laughs> that she's family, she's not going to hurt us. So right before they had dinner, they decided to go out to the woods and meet this old woman. But they didn't want Aunt Denise knowing about it. Well, their mother and aunt knowing about it. So they show up at the house and Portia was a little nervous. Passion was a little nervous. I'm so sorry. Um, but she was like, y'all go ahead and knock on the door. And right when Red was going to knock on the door, that's when the door opened up and... Aunt Kitty was basically like, y'all go ahead and come on here. I've been waiting on you all evening. So when they walked in, the um, the house smelled of fresh baked bread. And so that's when Red said, mm, what's that smell? She said, oh, I've been baking goodies for, for y'all all night. He walked them into a kitchen and they sat down and sat in an already placed at the dining room table with plates and um, little cups for them to drink out of. And she said, y'all, are y'all hungry? And Red said, well, we, we were just about to have um, dinner, but we can eat. We can eat anyway. <laughs> so she got the bread. She had baked this um, gingerbread and also some banana nut bread and all these little goodies, tea cakes for them. And uh, Red, when he got it, he started gobbling, gobbling up real fast. She said, now slow down now, child. You don't want to get, you don't want to choke yourself. So she sat down, the old woman sat down at the other empty chair finally. And she said, well, y'all, I'm sure y'all know by now that um, I'm Aunt Kitty. And they say, yes, ma'am. But then she said, I heard from your mother, twins. She called the twins, twins. Girl, old people. She said, well, now, I heard from your mother, twins, that Francine isn't feeling so well. And that's when the twins looked confused. And Passion was like, how do you know? <laughs> that's when the old lady said, well, from Denise, of course. And they all looked at each other and read, read and um, Passion were like, our mama? Our mama, you've been talking to our mama? And so Aunt Kitty revealed, yeah, I've been talking to your mother. She comes up here almost every week to check on me. And they all looked shocked. They could not believe that Aunt Denise had been going up to the old, to the woods and they never knew about it. Um, so Kitty goes on to say, she's like, you know, it's been a while since I've seen my sister. I know a lot of things have happened. And of course, you kids don't, don't need to know everything. But I really would love to see my sister before it's too late. So I need for y'all to do me a favor. And so the kids were listening, you know, waiting for what she's going to say. 
I need for y'all to um, convince your parents to have a dinner for her. That way I can show up and surprise her. And so Landon, who is the, you know, he's, he's wise beyond his years child. And so he's like, do you think that's a good idea? And then Kitty kind of looked at him and said, yes, all that's in the past. If I've moved on, surely she has. So yes, talk to your mothers and let them know, you know, that I'm coming, but tell them not to let Francine know. So that's what they did. The twins went to their mom, Aunt Denise. They, you know, convinced her that um, they wanted to have this party for the grandmother. Landon went to his mother and did the same thing. So, so a couple of weeks went by and they planned this huge party for Francine, right? Everyone made dishes, girl. Let's see what they had on the menu this time. They had green beans, they had catfish, they had stuffed salmon, um, buttermilk pound cake, red velvet cake, girl, sweet tea, uh, peach cobbler. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jamie's like, what a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> They had everything that I wanted to eat right now. So they made all this food for Aunt Francine to celebrate her. You know, while she's still alive, let's celebrate her life, let's celebrate her. So they had this, you know, this gathering and it was just a family, okay? Family, a couple of distant cousins came on. So um, no friends, just family, you know, just close family. So they're all having a good time. And for the first time in a very long time, Landon saw his mother smiling and just happy and just, you know, having a good time. And it was really good. It was really good to see his mama in, in that in that headspace. So as it was getting later, they heard a knock at the door. Francine was a little confused. She said, like, "Well, who could that be?" Now it's getting a little late, and everybody who's here is here. You know, everyone that I would assume would be here is here already, right? So Aunt De Denise excused herself and she walked to the front door, and Francine could hear some whispering, whispering. And Anne walked in. It was this beautiful woman with, uh, she had her silver hair braided all the way around to the side. What? She had her, yeah, child, she had on a beautiful gown. I mean, she just looked absolutely Super royal, hair. regal. So Francine was looking around and she, at first she couldn't recognize her until Aunt Kitty spoke and said, good to see you, Francine. And that's when Francine got up and she was like, is that who I think it is? And she's like, yes, it is. It's Kitty. And that's when they walked towards each other. They embraced each other and just was hugging it, hugging each other. And that's when Francine was saying, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry that I did that. And Kitty was like, oh, baby, that was so long ago. You're my baby sister. I'll always love you. I forgave you a long time ago. So now I'm here. I'm here for you. So they're embracing, hugging each other, and that's when um, the aunts were like, hey, you know, let's let them hash it out. It's been a long time since they talk. Let's let's give them their space, basically. Everyone's feeling great, right? They're like, awesome, you know, we have reunited these sisters. They finally can hash things, not necessarily hash things out, but, you know, since Francine is ending her life, it's basically end point for both of them, and let's just close this door. They forgive each other, and let's move on. About 10 minutes have gone by and all of a sudden they hear shouting and arguing. And they hear, they hear Kitty's voice over everything. She's like, I knew it. I knew I should never came over here. You've never changed. You've always been jealous of me. And Francine is saying, jealous of you for what? You were dusty then? You old and dusty now? <laughs> Francine can drag and read for days, y'all. Francine was like, you were dusty then, you old and dusty now. <laughs> so, um, Kitty was upset. Kitty's upset. She's starting to cry. She's like, you know what? You are the most selfish person I've ever met. My own sister after all these years. You mean to tell me that if I can forgive you, you're going to bring up this stuff now? She's like, Francine, I feel so sorry for your children. I'm done. She turns around to the girl. She's like, Denise. I'm so done, baby. I'm so sorry. I came here. And Denise is like, no, 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 Aunt Kitty. No, you have to say. She's like, no, I gotta go. I gotta go. And that's Francine, Francine turned around and said, y'all were in on this? Uh-uh, baby. Don't shake the table. Francine's turned around pointing fingers at her kids. She said, oh, y'all knew about this? Denise and Linda's mama are looking at each other confused. But yeah, they're like, yeah, mama, we thought that it would be a good time for you to rekindle back with your sister, Aunt Kitty. And Francine said, no, no. Never. Y'all all get out. She kicked them all out. She's no. Y'all all need to leave. She said, I'm sorry for the babies, but y'all need to leave. So they gather, gather up their kids. They looked at each other all confused because they thought, you know, child, nah. So all everyone went home. 
table. Of course, the next weekend, Landon went, goes over to his Aunt Denise's house and the twins are shaking their head. And um, Passion said, I was up and I heard, um, I heard mama crying all night. She was talking to grandma. Grandma was really upset, say, basically was saying how they should have never done this and um, how she she probably could never forgive us for that. And Landon, Landon was confused. Time time goes by and unfortunately, a couple of months later, Francine ends up dying of cancer. That's what she had. She was terminally ill. She dies of cancer. What happened is that, I guess as her last trying to make things right, is that the grandmother ended up leaving the house to Kitty. Kitty was very surprised. She thought that she would donate the house or whatever. She wasn't, she was surprised that her sister after all these years would still leave something to her. But Kitty was comfortable where she had. Mind you, this was someone who had an opportunity to go off to Paris, France in the 50s. And she was perfectly fine staying in Alabama. So she thought it over and she finally told, you know, the, um, the, the children, Francine children, she said, you know what? I know y'all think of me differently living out here in this old shack, but I like where I live at. I like that I have my dresses. I sew every now and then. She said, y'all have families. Why don't you go ahead and move into the big house? So sure enough, Denise ended up moving into the house because she has the most children. And Landon's mom was perfectly fine with that. They still went over every other weekend. They had all these good cookouts and um, they worked on the garden. The kids learned all about gardening um, during the summertime. And yeah, that is it, you guys. You know, not every story has an actual happy ending, but I think this was, this has sort of a happy ending. All right, you guys, make sure you stay tuned for the next story. It is called The Contract. Now, this one is set in the 80s in L.A., Say it right, girl. It's set in the 1980s. <laughs> it's in Los Angeles. And it's about an aspiring actress. And again, it's called The Contract. So stay tuned for that one. And this one will be a scary one, by the way. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.